Hello everybody and welcome to Dark Souls 3. Now, uh, this is going to be the start of my final walkthrough of the game. Um, I'm doing this again because basically Game of the Year Edition has just been released so we're going to include all of the DLC. Uh, it's going to be of the latest patch updates. Um, and I picked up a lot of tricks from kind of just my experimentation through the different walkthroughs and you guys as well. Um, obviously you guys being the people that have already been here supporting me which I'm very thankful for. Uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome to Joe Hammer channel. Um, you, here you're going to find um, all of the easiest and cheapest tricks for getting through Dark Souls 3. Now, um, let's get things... First things first, let's look at my character here. Take, I'm playing as um, a female character. I didn't actually realise this until today. I'm sorry about breathing into the mic there, by the way. Uh, we actually have a British God of War called Andraste. Uh, now, that does sound like it's been ripped straight out of Dragon Age, but it's true. Go ahead and Google it, because uh, that's where I found the name. Um, so we're going to be female, uh, and I'm starting as the knight. So let's take a look um, at the options that we have for starting classes here. Uh, I do want to make this as complete as possible, so I'm going to give my opinion on a lot of things. Um, and I'll try to put, and I will be putting timestamps into the descriptions so that you guys can skip around um, to whatever you guys might want to say. Now, without a shadow of a doubt, the most versatile and majority of the time the best class to start out as this is the knight which is exactly what we're going to be doing here the reason for this is um i don't know if it's going to let me get across it let's see if we can get the mouse up yeah we've got the mouse cursor so the reason for this is is basically this here the look stat is incredibly low and the, the points that you've got points in are useful for any uh, kind of character trope or build uh, now what i mean by this is even if you want to be a sorcerer you are going to put points into strength because you're going to want to be able to use the shield. You are going to put points into vitality because you're going to put a shield on and you're going to need to have the weight uh, capacity to be able to carry uh, and use the various types of equipment which we're going to see as we go through. Um, and you know, you're going to have very low health here uh, as well as a lot of other things. The biggest disadvantage to this is all of these points, whoops, all of these points that have been spent in luck here. Uh, so when you consider the end goal um, you have lost five points to look uh, don't get me wrong points have gone into faith here uh, you do get two points to go into faith so overall you end up with three points kind of being used elsewhere however the other thing of that being uh, as the knight you're only one point away from being able to use some very strong pyromancies as well um, all of this is going to get explained as we go through the game um, so don't worry if some of this is a little bit alien to you but um, as and when things become relevant, we will be explaining and exploring those things. Um, further down, where are, we, where are we now? So we've got the mercenary. Again, a fairly low look stat. Some of them have very, very high ones. Uh, and I'll explain about look at the end uh, of this kind of explanation of the character classes. Um, again, fairly low look stat. And actually pretty good as a secondary. If you are going to go into being a mage or a dex class... Um, because you've got quite high decks, which is useful to casters. We'll be exploring this later on once we pick up some different items to kind of show what difference this makes to casters. Um, but you start with a pretty good attunement and enough intelligence to use uh, basic spells. So actually a pretty good um, place to start if you want to be a caster. You've got the warrior uh, if you want to be kind of the opposite of the mercenary uh, in terms of the fact that you've got strength instead of dexterity. Uh, not as much in the casting values, but instead it's all gone into look, you see, which is kind of why I don't really recommend the warrior or the herald for the same reason, or the thief for an even bigger reason. Um, the assassin's not too bad. Starts with a very, very nice weapon, uh, which is the S-Doc. Um, you'll find that a lot of people don't like you using this, particularly in PvP. Uh, but I say to hell with those people. Use whatever you think. Use whatever you feel like using. Next up we have the straight up sorcerer, um, very cool if you kind of want to start out with spells, uh, they're not that useful, particularly the, you get the heavy soul arrow uh, and that's not actually all that great, it's too, for me it's just too slow, again we're going to be demonstrating all of this uh, and look at this as we go through the game. Uh, we've got the pyromancer, the next character that has, um, that has the seven in look now this is very very useful however you are kind of stuck with being a caster so very much less uh, flexibility here and the reason i'm saying this is because you have the ability to respec in this game so having this start as your starting stats um 
because once you respec, these will be where your, all of your stat points start from. Having these as your starting stats here means you can essentially spec into anything. Uh, because you can spec into a melee character very, very nicely. Or you can take all your points back out of there. You can turn into a faith character and just power into faith. Because you've only got 9 intelligence anyway. Which is only 2 more than if you'd have started as a cleric. Uh, and again, you'll have simply pulled those points out for luck anyway. And had them go somewhere more useful. Um, you can then do a luck build if you want. Because again, your intelligence and faith are going to be low. Who's got the lowest, Who's got the highest luck here? So, you know, you've got intelligence, of, intelligence faith of... Uh, 8 and 10 there, uh, instead of the 9 and 9. So you've got points come out of there and going in to look for that. So this is all, it all just ends up getting put into very, very important stats instead. Um, so for me, the most flexible and the best start. You also get some of the best weapons and starting equipment because you've got a very, very good shield. Now all of these other shields these guys have here don't block all of the damage that's going to come your way, whereas the Knights does. Uh, and the Longsword is probably tied with the S-Stock in terms of how good it is. So, very, very good starting equipment here. Um, moving down, we've got the Cleric. Again, same story as the, as the Sorcerer, except for, for different abilities. I very, very much dislike uh, the Faith kind of builds in this game. Uh, until you get into the later areas of the DLC, not very many strong abilities. Um, so, I really wouldn't start out as this guy, or this lady, should I say, in my case. Again, if you want to respect that way, once we've gotten further into the game, that's entirely up to you. Uh, and then we have the Deprived. Um, kind of more geared towards if you want a challenge run, and you'll see a lot of people doing level 1 runs with this. The club is actually pretty good, has a great scaling uh, with strength. Uh, again, we'll talk about scaling later, um, as I'd rather get on with the game. Very, very basic gear. In fact, I don't think you even have any armor uh, as the... Oh, we got class. As the, uh, as the deprived. Sorry, guys, I don't usually use the mouse, so I'm just totally messing stuff up here. Um... It's a weird overview of the classes there, and don't get me wrong, like you, it, it's not going to be the end of the world if you decide, you know what, I want to be the sorcerer, I'm going to start as a sorcerer, that's fine, uh, but bear in mind that you are always kind of going to be more geared towards that anyway. Now out of the 120 levels you can, or, or should I say the 700 and something levels you can pour into your character, you know, it's not the end of the world, you can, you can spec into anything, do anything you want, and use any weapon from any class. So it's quite flexible, but this is just me giving my two cents in terms of min-maxing and having the flexibility to make a character capable of doing anything. Um, so we're going to start as the knight, uh, but bear in mind that the intention is probably going to be that we're going to end up using a lot of sorceries, because that is what I enjoy doing. Um, but I am going to kind of try to explore other avenues as well, particularly with this character. So with that said, uh, next up we can move down to the burial gifts. I should probably bring my mouse cursor for this as well. Um, now, a lot of this I think is pretty useless. Uh, the Divine Blessing, Hidden Blessing aren't very good. Um, they're one use versions of what this item is here, which is a heal. Uh, so this can heal you. You also get blue ones that restore what are called focus points, which is basically your mana. And these are basically just like one use versions of those, which I don't see that much use in. Uh, the Black Fire Bombs are okay for the first boss. But they're very, very slow, and they're finite, so I don't really find much use in those. you got the Fire Gem. That's actually a pretty decent one early in the game. Uh, once you kind of get past the first area, you can use this to make your weapon more powerful. But uh, I will be showing how we can kind of do that anyway, um, but not with the Fire Gem, with a different type of weapon, and it makes it a bit more flexible for more people. Sovereignless Soul. This is what I'm going to be starting with, just because it provides you with an early boost uh, to your stats. Um, very, very quickly in the game, we're going to be boosting Vigor up to 20, which basically almost makes you unkillable for the first areas of the game. Um, and so that's why I'm going to be taking that. Basically, in the same vein, you can take the Life Ring. Uh, this will basically just give you, I think it's a 10% boost to overall HP. Um, so a similar kind of thing, but it's taken up a ring slot, and I don't really want to do that this early in the game. I mean, I suppose we could. No real kind of, or at least for me anyway, probably not really very much difference either way. Uh, and we actually get the benefit earlier with the life ring. So feel free to take this, uh, but just because it's out of habit, I'm going to take the Sovereign of Soul. Um, got a facial preset here. Um, no, don't change my face. There we go. It took me a while to kind of get it to there. Uh, I'm not a fan of playing with the face all that much. I kind of just used, um, choose a similar face a few times to get a face that was acceptable. Uh, I've always liked having red hair. My little boy, 
uh, who's six. He really likes having green eyes, so when he watches the video, he'll be like, "Yay, green eyes!" And um, went for the blue tears. We're going to be—we're probably going to be a caster, and we're going to bathe in the tears of our enemies. That is the plan. So with that said, guys, let's get into this. I'm sorry I've talked your ears off, but now it's time to uh, to enter the game, which is going to be the Untended Graves. For the first episode, we're going to be basically clearing the first area. Oh, shut up now. Okay then, so from this point onwards, I'm going to be a little bit more careful about my speech and stuff. We are going to keep all of the cinematics in. Obviously we skipped through the first one, just because I wanted to get into the character creation. Um, we are going to keep all of the cinematics in. I'm going to try and capture as much of the dialogue as possible as well, so you guys will be able to hear all of that. Now, you're going to start off in this area just here. Uh, we're going to have these little basic enemies. Again, we've got the long sword, which is more than enough to deal with them. We are going to go down here and grab this item. We could come back for this later. Um, because we are going to be revisiting the starter area uh, once we've kind of gotten past the first boss. So, if you're a veteran and you're here just to see what, what I'm doing, here to enjoy the Let's Play uh, kind of style of walkthrough that we intend on doing here, um, or for any other reason. In fact, whilst we're here as well, I'm going to explain, let's get rid of that. Um, we are going to come back to this area to deal with some of the optional stuff very, very soon. So for now, feel free to just kind of deal with these guys. Let me get rid of you. There we are. These guys again with the longsword. Absolutely almost zero challenge. But if you are new to the game, feel free to kind of play around with them a bit. Get used to the controls. Um, and, you know, just in general, get used to the feel of the game. Familiarity with this game, as well as knowledge, are probably the two biggest things that are going to help you get through. So this, for those that don't know, is a bonfire, which are our checkpoints. We can fast travel to and from these, and they restore our healing uh, items down below. So as I was saying before, when I press to use an item, consumes one of these, heals my health. This would heal my uh, focus points, but we don't really have any abilities to use those up right now. So they're not really all that useful to us immediately. But if you're playing the sorcerer, that would be invaluable. So next up, we've got this guy directly ahead of us. We can try and draw him over. Come on. This is because around the corner, let's see if we can get some up. He can't really hurt me anyway. Um, we've got enemies down there laying in wait as an ambush. So we can deal with this guy. Like so, nice and easy. So yeah, if you run down there, you run into trouble from a lot of enemies. So we don't bother with that. Instead, what you want to try and do, and I may fail at this. If I do, I'm just going to carry on anyway. But you want to try and jump off here like this. I missed it. You want to try and get on this coffin. And on there is going to be a little Titanite stone. It's not essential right now, so we'll have a second go at this later. Um, but that's for upgrading your weapons, which we'll be able to do shortly. But you need two of them to be able to upgrade your weapon, so getting it straight away isn't essential. Let me do it with this guy. There we go. Now it's up to you at this point whether or not you want to use a healing item to kind of get your health up to the top. I don't recommend it because it will heal better than that. He's not going to one-shot you. You can drop down here to kill these two enemies and then run past all of these guys. You could re-rest at the bonfire to get some fire bombs. But I find they used to be too slow for this boss, and it just doesn't really work for me. So, in we go. Now, for me, this first encounter with the boss is easier than the second, and I'm going to show you why. Basically, as soon as you take out the sword, run behind him and get some free hits on him. Like so. And there we go, we've already taken down a good portion of his health. Now, his attacks are quite blockable. Uh, I find circling around to his right hand side basically means he doesn't hit you all that often. Don't get too greedy, hit him one time at a time, like I said, we get 100% block on this guy with this character, so not too much to be afraid of here. His health isn't that high in comparison to a lot of the bosses in the game. Um, obviously try and read his attacks, don't walk into them if you can help it when he starts an attack animation. Fairly soon he's going to go into his second stage, you'll find that with a lot of bosses, a lot of them have several stages. You want to step away from him a bit because he does kind of hit you with that a little bit. And his only real dangerous attack to us right now 
um, is his jumping one, which he's going to do now. You kind of want to roll to the side. Don't roll backwards because he will still hit you with it. And we're just going to keep on rotating around to the right. He's nearly dead now. We could, in fact, get greedy now if we wanted. I rolled a little bit too early, but we still got away with that. Um, he's only a couple of hits from death. And there's the first boss. Weaker than spilt milk. Uh, I don't think he actually even caused any damage on us there. So. That's all sorted. Now then, uh, for defeating that boss, we have become Embered. As you can see, in the top left corner, the um, icon has turned into a little fiery symbol. Uh, we, that, that symbol can change. You'll see that later on. But uh, basically... That basically means we get a boost in HP until we die next. So provided we are careful, we now have more HP. So with that being done, got an item out here. I don't think this is very useful. I think it's a fading sword or something. Yeah, broken straight sword. Nothing particularly handy. Um, don't be too worried about any enemies around here. We're just going to run straight up all these steps and straight into this building right at the top. Uh, in here, a lot of stuff to do. I'm going to give a tour before the end of this, but we're not going to do it right now. Uh, just know that for for now, for this moment in particular anyway, the first thing we want to do is stick this down here. And we're going to sit at this bonfire because that will turn this into our checkpoint. There we go. So now if we die, we will respawn at this checkpoint instead of the previous one. Next up, we're going to go over to Blacksmith over in the corner. Um... And we are gonna, oh wow, we're gonna allot our Estus all into the healing version, uh, just because we've got no use for the um, Ashen version of those. Right then, so with a few souls that we got, we're gonna use these up on this lady here. This is where we level up. Um, I will be coming back for her dialogue later, but essentially, as I was saying before, all straight into the top stat. Just gonna extend that life bar of ours a little bit. Reset there, that's going to put all of our heals back in. Make sure you do rest before you go ahead and do anything else around here so that uh, you have got your full accompaniment of healing available. Is it this one? Nope. Right, so we're going to go up some steps. Uh, this is essentially how we're going to level up faster earlier. This is going to allow us to uh, get more souls, which is how we level, and which is why we haven't done any side areas in the starting area yet. So we're going to get up here. This could take me a few attempts, by the way. I'll try to edit those out, if I remember. I'm not always great at it, though. Alright, so you want to run at this tree, jump off over onto here. Oh, yes, did it first time. Right, so. Get all of our gear back on. This isn't really important to do right now, but just means we won't have to do it in a minute. Homeward Bones just here. Homeward Bones, they are used... Um, basically, if you use that, it'll take you straight back to the last um, checkpoint that you rested at. I don't think there's another item over this way. We'll double check. Just because it looks traversable. No, nothing there. Right, so. The real important bit. We're going to go through this way. Now these birds are going to talk to us. We're not too bothered about these right now. We can get up here later on if we need to. Esther Shard. That is going to get us even more healing. Again, we're up here a lot earlier than... Uh, I think kind of the developers would have intended, but that's fine. And jump off the end, and then down here is the Silver Covetous Serpent Ring. Covetous Silver Serpent Ring. I always get forget which order those words go in. And that is essentially going to give us a boosted uh, amount of souls for everything that we kill. So with that done, um, let's go back to the starting area where we're going to deal with um, a slightly tougher enemy. But it's not going to be an issue. Again, we've got our extra souls. I don't think we even used... No, we've not even used these yet. So we'll use these up before we go. Just to make sure this fight is even more assured. Talk to the firekeeper. Whoops. Then touch, the dark touch the darkness within her. Right. There we go. Now, the aim is, before we kind of set off into the next area, to have... Vigor up to 20, because uh, that is going to have us at a comfortably um, 
large amount of souls. So I guess at this point it's worth explaining about kind of the mechanic of this. Now, so now that we've got the uh, the cold bonfire in there, when we rest at it, uh, you'll have your menu here of different things you can do. You can store items. So if there's anything that you don't want to have with you, you can uh, store them in the box. At the minute, obviously, we haven't really got anything. We can store this look just to kind of show it. Uh, keeping it tidy can be very, very useful, particularly if you need to look for something uh, in your inventory in a short amount of time. So be aware of that. And here we've got two sets of places um, that you can travel to. This is probably the first and only time I can think of where you can actually fast travel somewhere um, without actually having visited it first. And that's going to be the path of progression, which we'll be doing probably in the next episode, just to keep it all kind of separate. So we're going to go back to Cemetery of Ash, which is the first bonfire that we came across. Get straight on over this way. Cool. So, I'm going to head on back in to the Cemetery of Ash. Obviously, all the enemies here, it's still basically very, very easy for us. Don't need to really be worried about anything. Not until we get around the corner, anyway. We've already collected the item over that way, which was uh, just a few extra souls for us. Deal with you. Don't think there's anyone else following. Make sure nothing does follow you into here, because this enemy is fairly challenging if you don't know what you're doing. So we're going to run through this way. And in here you're going to see a big blue creature. Big blue creature over here with crystals all over its back. It's going to try and roll over you. No, it's not. Now, this guy, much like the boss Gundir, if you just kind of circle around him, you're going to be pretty safe. Just be careful when he tries to do like a belly flop. Where are we? Show me the belly flop. There we go. He does a belly flop. Makes all of these uh, crystals come out. And, uh, yeah, they can hit. So, much like the boss Gundir, Keep on circling around him. Try not to get, into, get in the way of his attacks. Don't be greedy. One or two shots at a time. And you'll be fine. Try not to let the bite hit you. If I remember right, that does quite a lot of damage. And can basically stagger your shield straight away. There we go. That was a nice little staggering. It's kind of random when that happens. He's going to try and do his roll. Basically because he's getting annoyed at us for uh, kicking his ass so bad. It's this kind of area where it can be dangerous because we haven't got the room to get around him. So we probably should bring him back this way. Careful of his breath attack. Try to bring these crystals up. But all of his attacks are blockable. Let's get this moving. As you can see there, although I blocked it, some of that damage still went through the shield. I got too greedy there, that was my fault. Oop, let's get out of the way now. Now again, when it comes to healing, don't rush with it. Wait for an, an opportunity where you would normally attack and then uh, use that to heal. Nearly there. As you can see, this fight is probably longer than the boss fight. Try not to get greedy. I could have gotten greedy there and that would have been bad. Oh, come on. There we go. Cool. So, as you can see there, that guy gives quite a lot of souls. Uh, with a Silver Serpent ring on, we get a few added to it. With that done, get the extra souls there. And we can head on back out. Now, you don't have to use them if you don't want to, but I'm going to use a Homeward Burn just because it's quicker. Uh, don't forget that you do actually have this menu here, uh, which you can use for quick slot items. I'm going to take some of these off, actually, because I don't like, really use many of these. Don't use the Dark Sun either, so let's use this. We're going to go back to the Shrine Bonfire, rather than the rest of that, because that's going to be quicker. We're going to use all those up. Okay, so back to the Fire, sh fire Link Shrine Lady. And there we are. Bigger up to 20, which is great. As you can see, health bar is fairly large now. Um, and we've hit what's called kind of like a soft cap for it, where basically the points that you put there will not give you as many um, HP points as we have been previously. That doesn't mean it's worthless putting them there. We're probably going to hit 30 or 40 by the end of the uh, playthrough. But 20 is a good place to start. Just reinforcing there, so we've got five heals. Now this next enemy... Uh, which is also optional. It's pretty tough, so be careful about it. Particularly as he can bleed you, which basically takes your uh, HP down on a, uh, on a percentage basis. But uh, we're going to try and take him down 
in the first shot. Hopefully that works. So we can deal with these guys first, because they can sneak up on you during this fight. Really not giving us very many souls though. Grab this whilst we're here. I think there's an item up on the tree as well. well that, although that might be later. We're, yeah, we've got an item up on the tree. East West Shield. Not really a fan of it. Particularly with the one we've got anyway. Now this guy, he's what a lot of people would call staggerable, which basically means when you hit him, it knocks him out of his attack patterns quite easily. Uh, but his attack patterns are pretty fast, and as you can see, we've got the bar, bar building up down at the bottom there. Uh, but basically, if you get away from him, you can get a heal, and uh, he won't be too bad. Now he's in a perfect position. Oh, he parried me. Be careful of that. It's na never nice to get parried. But he was in the perfect position there to uh, knock off, which is the easiest way to take him down if you can get him into the angle. Ouch. He is quite brutal. For some reason, he seems to have like almost limitless stamina. Again, he's kind of in the perfect position there if we can get him to sort of fall off. There we go. That works for me. So, all you need to do is wait for his uh, souls to appear like that, which is cool. We're going to stand over at this um, kind of little platform just here, and we're going to quit the game and come back in. Um, sorry if this is going to be kind of a couple of loading screens for you, but it's worth it, trust me. There we go, let's get this back in. Whoops, yeah, continue, that's fine. I don't know why, I thought I was pressing your game there. Cool, so we've got the huge katana, which is a nice little um, katana weapon. So that is basically the weapon that he was using against us. Uh, if we two-hand it, we should have enough strength. It's probably dexterity that we don't have enough of to use it. Yeah, we need more dexterity to use it. Uh, very, very nice, and the bleed... Um, status element that was building up on us. We can actually build up on enemies now, which is great. But we don't have the correct stats to use it. We are going to be sticking with the longsword. Uh, Trying to work where the other ember is. There's another ember around here somewhere that we can pick up. I think it's around the corner. Let's go and let's go double check. Should be around this way. On the left. Where is it? There we go. This dog. I think this is the ember here. Uh, yeah, that's the ember there. Cool. So that is everything we want to collect in the first area. We can use these souls up. Um, probably going to put this into stamina, which is the green bar, which is the next one we kind of want to build up uh, for now. Notice that um, I'm not actually um, leveling any of the strength or dexterity stats right now, uh, mainly because we are going to infuse this weapon fairly soon. Uh, in, in a way that basically makes those not matter for a while, which allows us much more freedom in terms of getting the rest of our stats um, leveled up, which is basically why I do it in that order. Uh, so we're going to use our souls right here, like so. Very well done. So yeah, we get one point in endurance. Um, and that basically puts us in a very, very strong position for the next area. Um, we're going to do the next area in um, another episode. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to, just going to turn the mic off uh, and we're going to go and talk to all of the various NPCs in this area uh, just so that you guys can kind of hear what their dialogue's like if you don't want to listen to it to yourself in your own playthroughs. Um, and in my last walkthrough, I was kind of asked to leave it in. So we're just going to kind of walk around, see what everyone has to say uh, and zoom to the next area. So I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Thank you for watching. Ashen One, produce the coiled sword at the bonfire. The Mark of Ash will guide thee to the land of the Lords, to Lothric, where the homes of the Lords converge. Ashen One, to be unkindled is to be a vessel for souls. Sovereignless souls will become thy strength. I will show thee how. Ashen One, bring me souls plucked from their vessels. Ashen One, to be unkindled is to be a vessel for so I'll Ash Farewell, Ashen. Ah, another one 
roused from the sleep of death. Well, you're not alone. We unkindled are worthless. Can't even die right. <laughs> Gives me conniptions. And it have us seek the lords of Cinder and return them to their molding thrones. But we are talking true legends with the metal to link the fire. Not fit to lick their boots. Don't you think? <laughs> What a sick joke. Asking us to seek the Lords of Cinder and return them to their molding thrones. We're talking true legends, those who would link the fire. We're not fit to lick their boots. to make thine acquaintance, Ashen One. I am but a humble handmaid of the shrine. Weapons, armor, trinkets, and spells. I've lots of little things to ease the burden of a weary traveler. And yes, I'm undead too, but not so charitable as to give my goods away. Ashen One, fetch souls and bring them to me. As is thy want, no? <laughs> Ashen One, if my wares are not to thy satisfaction, bring me umbral ash. With ash, I'll fashion new wares. Is it not our sorry fate to sup on death? <laughs> Knowest thou of that soppy gossip? That cordial intrusion layeth the path to embers? And so thou art in need of a soapstone, ashen one. Then thy pockets will overflow with souls to trade to me. <laughs> Ashen One. Ah, well met. Tis good to see ye in good health. What needs smithing this day? Weapons and protection are sturdy enough by and large. But when overused, they'll eventually break. When their durability is low, repair becomes a necessity. Use a powder, or simply rest at a bonfire. But should chance impel them break, bring them me. I'll hammer them back into shape. They take no pleasure in breaking, I assure ye. So handle them with care, if you would. There are two ways to smith weapons. Simple reinforcement is one, and infusion the other. Reinforcement is straightforward. It strengthens a weapon without altering its property. Infusion is a more advanced form of smithing that infuses an element. Reinforcement requires titanite, and infusion requires gems. Bring the stones, and I'll do the smithing. It's my purpose, after all. In battle, your weapons are your only friends. Forge them well, and they won't let you down. Ma, another matter. Infusing weapons with gems requires a special kind of coal. My humble coals won't be any use infusing more unusual gems. I know. It's an awful shame, but it's all I have. Oh, please don't give me that look. Believe it or not, I'm quite thin-skinned. <laughs> oh, by the way, they can put out those flasks you want for life or focus. And they'll always stay with you. 
Why not treat them well? Huh? <laughs> Weapons and protect with wit, but dates are pretty big like that. The seeker of lords. I am Ludlith of Corland. Look not in bewilderment as I say. I linked the fire long ago, becoming the Lord of Cinder. If substantiation be thy want, set thine eyes upon my charmed corpse. This sad cadaver. No need to be coy. Have a closer look. Knowest thou of our purpose? Five thrones will take five lords as kindling for the linking of the fire. The fast fading flame must be licked to preserve this world. A reenactment of the first linking of the fire. So it is, I became a lord of Cinder. I may be but small, but I will die a colossus. Knowest thou of our purpose? 